Okay, so welcome back to this video. Um, we will be fixing the mistakes that we actually that I've actually um, carried out in this painting. And again, this is part of the process, so don't be too frustrated by mistakes. So let's start with the shape in the middle. I've dropped some ink on top of that. And I just want to paint over it with the same color again. So let me get more of that paint on my palette. and try to mix enough for this shape. Okay, and with the flat brush, I go over my shape again, very carefully, not to damage um, any paint underneath or any shape next to it as well. So, as you can see, I'm very deliberate with the flat brush now. Now that I've defined all the hard edges with my fine brush in the previous videos, I can now go with the flat brush and just um, retouch these colors. Or these uh, this paint so um, yeah this is it for the middle part I will leave it for now and when it dries I might actually go back and paint over it for a third time that's okay uh, what I'll do now is I'll try to redo the golden part uh, again because they aren't really touching the blue shape in the middle so that gives me some room to work with it and try to avoid um, painting many shapes next to each other otherwise the colors could bleed onto each other and becomes a bit of a mess so um, let's see again I need to just shake the ink bottle just to make sure that it is stirred properly that should be fine so this time I could use actually my round brush no need for the and I could just go over it again uh, gold and you know these metallic inks they're quite forgiving so it's okay I'll just pick the parts that I feel have haven't got enough paint on top of it and you could see that when you place uh, wet paint onto the dry paint it, it reactivates the dry paint underneath so you gotta be careful not to be too abrasive to the paint underneath very gentle brush strokes and you could always come back and darken it later or redo it or touch it up again uh, later so no need to rush or try to finish everything all at once take your time especially with watercolors because it takes time to actually properly dry depending of course on the dryness of the atmosphere you're working in so um, I think this is quite good now for the gold and these um, and this blue part in the middle. Uh, what I'll do is I probably want to fix those green uh, eight pointed stars. So I'll close my ink bottle here, make sure it's sealed properly, avoid any accidents. And let me see if I've got some of this uh, green color over here in my palette 
and I can start painting over the shape again. Um, I've noticed this, what they call a flower or cauliflower. It happens when you get very diluted paint or relatively diluted paint onto uh, relatively drier um, paint. So I'm just painting over it. I'll do the same here as well. And I don't mind this effect. Uh, it gives me like a random effect. Um, I think this is one thing to admire and appreciate in watercolors that they are quite random. They will follow. You know, they're affected by a lot of factors, mainly the paper underneath, the paint itself as well. So I'm using Daniel Smith watercolors, which I think are brilliant. But um, as I said before, I prefer painting and acrylic paint, so but I don't mind the randomness and, you know, the unpredictability of watercolors. They give the painting some character. So now onto this eight pointed star. Again, I'm quite deliberate with my brush strokes here. Don't want to Don't want to leave these brush strokes because they will show in the painting at the end. So just maybe, yeah, I think this is good enough for me at least. And let's try and fix the ones in the middle as well. So yeah, we've done, we can just be finished with all the green eight pointed stars. So I notice this is the lightest, so I'll try to darken this one. Careful not to touch the other surrounding parts, which are still wet. Okay, so this is one. What I'll do is I'll try to fix this one as well. It has had some of the ink spill on it, so that's okay. Again. Okay, I think these are okay now. I might not need to retouch uh, these. I feel that they're okay but maybe I could just go over them very lightly, you know, with very diluted uh, paint, maybe. Maybe it's going to turn out to be a mistake, but um, we'll see. to this one. I 
you're unsure, always work in many layers. So take your time in layering the watercolor paint. So it doesn't have to be like a dark application or a strong application. You could just go on and add layers as you go, you know, let it dry out completely and then redo it again and again. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the green. I think I'm not going to touch the lighter blue ones because I quite like how they come across and they do provide uh, a good cam contrast, tonal contrast, as well as a hue contrast with the magentas. I just need to redo these cerulean blue crosses on the outside and the magenta on the inside. So what I'll do first is I'll let the inside dry out a little bit more inside of the painting and then I'll go over in the meantime I'll, I'll just redo the cerulean blue parts on the outside of the painting. So this will help me cover these little mistakes that I've accidentally, you know, painted over. So yeah, that's uh, quite good. I think let's go over the Serenium blue again. So that's my two shapes here. I rotate to do the other two shapes on the bottom of the painting. So more ceridian blue. Last bits here. Okay, and now I'm done with the uh, cerulean blue on the outside. What I want to do is just go over the magenta shapes 
on the inside. So again, try to get more paint here. And here I'll be very careful with my layering. So I don't want to make it too strong and I don't want it to affect the painting too much. So I still like it the way it is. So let's go over it now very deliberately. And as you can see, it's quite strong. So I'll probably just limit this by applying it through just, you know, I won't get more paint from the palette. That's more than enough for me. And again, it will leave like a random effect, which is okay for me. Okay, so made this a bit stronger. Go on the second one. Next two shapes. I'm very careful because a lot of the painting is actually wet. So I don't want to be ruining anything at this stage. I'm supposed to be fixing mistakes, not making them at the moment. But uh, again, please don't be too frustrated if you make a mistake here at this stage. Again, you could go over it again and again and again. And it's not the end of the world. We're painting to have fun and relax and enjoy. So as you can see from the painting, I'm not a perfectionist by all means. And okay. I think I just need to, yeah. And that's it. I think the next step would be, I'll probably redo the one in the middle again, just to make sure that there is none of that uh, painting. But I do like the character where there is randomness and it's like a bit amateur, if that makes sense. It's not like a very sharp finish. And I do think that it will look good in a frame uh, if framed under a mount. Uh, so it's, I think it's 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. It was, I'll do the measurements once it's dry and, uh, I'll show you in the next video how to cut, you know, our painting from the paper and frame it in a frame so that it can, uh, you know, be wall mounted or placed on a shelf to, for people to enjoy. So thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.